So, welcome everybody. This is fantastic. Um, uh, we, we, sorry for the technical hitch. Um, these things are sent to try us, uh, Maddie in particular. Um, but the technical team have done a brilliant job, of course. We actually moved uh, a screen from Cinema 3 into Cinema 1. So um, thank you very much for bearing with us. Uh, my name is Mark Cosgrove, uh, cinema curator here at Watershed and also co-founder um, with some other people in this room of um, Cinema Rediscovered, which is in its sixth edition and I'm glad to say in real life. Uh, hurrah, hurrah. So it, it is fantastic to see um, everybody in the cinema and hopefully you'll be joining us over the next few days for a celebration of all things cinema um, and film. Um, so yeah, we've, we've, we've gone slightly adrift with the schedule, um, but I'll try and get us, I'll try and get us back onto it. Uh, just to, just to um, uh, say that we've had, we live in interesting times, uh, of course, uh, interesting travel times, interesting health times. Um, and so uh, people will be joining us um, at different times. People have unfortunately had to um, pull out. Um, and in this session, Catherine Penny, unfortunately, um, couldn't make it. Um, and also uh, Matthew Barrington is going to be uh, on Zoom, as indeed is Christy Matheson. And I'll introduce them in a second. But um, just to give a bit of context, um, for this is this is obviously industry day as part of um, cinema rediscovered, and uh, I think we're all involved, of course, in different ways in in film and in film culture, um, and this is really an opportunity for us to sort of share experiences um, and uh, to to yeah to share experiences um, you know kind of what's what's been working uh, in terms of getting. Um, the world of kind of restorations and the history of, of film in front of audiences. I think, you know, one of the contexts um, that we find ourselves in is, is you know, people have spent two years at home being uh, watching films on whatever format, but certainly not watching them in the cinema. Um, and so more and more films, ironically, have become um, available for people to watch. Um, and as somebody who runs a cinema, um, here at Watershed and is also doing festivals is acutely aware of the pressures um, in terms of getting audiences, not just for new films, <laughs> but but also for um, older films. And um, you know, how do you kind of come out from that enormous shadow of um, Maverick, Top Gun, Minions, um, and and the great um, the great popular distractions that are doing phenomenal business. So how do you how do we get audiences um, engaged with that? As I say, rich um, um, film culture, um, and this is what is going to be sort of discussed over the next few panels and the various issues that arise. And we very much see it as being a conversation because you know the, the, there are people in the room that are that are working in different ways. There's also, uh, you know, I'm acutely aware of um, the range of different um, uh, resources at people's disposal um, as well. Um, and, you, you, you know, how, how do you, if you're, you know, working in different um, contexts, how do you sort of uh, begin to engage audiences? So um, just some uh, context for me, but I'm delighted to be joined, um, as I said, on Zoom. Um, is that if that's going to come up by uh, ah Ma perfect Matthew Barrington, <laughs> um, who who uh, is curator at the Barbican of the SA Film Festival, um, researcher curator based in London, um, and is doing lots of uh, great work uh, in the SA Film Festival, which is um, described rather wonderfully as an annual celebration of elusive, disruptive, dynamically hybrid form. Creative and critical, performative and political, the essay film is cutting edge of cinema's engagement with the world. Um, and we'll find out more about um, the sort of practicalities and, and to say the audience, um, important, all important audience engagement side of that from Matthew in, in a second. And then also um, Christy Matheson, um, who is up in Edinburgh and is, is creative director of the Edinburgh Film Festival. Um, she's, it's a role that she has just taken on. This will be her first festival coming up soon. 
Um, she's former director of film at ACMI, Australia's National Museum of Screen Culture, and has served on Screen Australia's Gender Matters Task Force. And we'll be talking about um, the work that she's doing on uh, at the Edinburgh Film Festival. And I'm delighted, absolutely delighted, to be joined in person, who's coming up on stage now, Ersan Koshbacht, um, who is one of the co-directors of Il Cinema Ritrovato in Bologna which is very much an inspiration for uh, Cinema Rediscovered. Um, I didn't think it was also going to take on the weather of uh, Bologna uh, as, well, as well, but we've kind of managed to bring the temperature down um, a bit. Um, Ersan is, has programmed some fantastic seasons um, as a researcher, um, curator, and has programmed some fantastic seasons uh, at uh, in Bologna and elsewhere, and most recently did uh, retrospective of Argentinian American director Hugo Fregonetti um, with with Dave Kerr um, at the recent festival. So welcome everybody. Um, I am aware of of time, um, so now um, and also want you, everybody to sort of get involved at some point. But I think if we just start by hearing from our guests a bit about. Um, I, I, you know, I think if you kind of um, zoom out a bit to talk about, um, I guess the the uh, I'd quite like to centre the audience um, and and how you work with the various organisations that you're involved in um, to to go from that idea to the audience, but but how how you think about the season and the work that you're doing and how you then begin to engage an audience with it. And if we could start with Ersan, perhaps. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, uh, I'm glad to be back here, Mark. And uh, the projects we do, uh, the, mostly the, the larger retrospectives, are really they come in different, different, different forms, and they have because of the different starting points. Sometimes, someone has already done something like an institution, organization, or a person restoring a group of films. Uh, having published a book on a particular director or a film person, which could be the starting point of it. But most of the things we do, like you mentioned Ferragonese, this was like an example of a personal passion project becoming something which involves many different people and institutions to collaborate together to, to make it happen. So how about just talking about Ferragonese, for example? Yeah. yeah. So I knew I wanted to do Fergonese. I just had seen three or four before, and I wanted to see more. So I just uh, sat down and watched everything. But the question or the problem with Fergonese was that for a long, long time, meaning that perhaps never ever before, there was a retrospective on him, except in Paris. And later on, we discovered that most of those prints were dubbed into French. So. When we wanted to, be, we decided to do it. Of course, it was logical to do it with Dave, because again, he had produced literature on Ferguson. Did you see who Dave? Dave Kerr is a curator of film at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, and before joining the MoMA, he was a critic for New York Times, and he actually produced. He wrote. Uh, one of the most wonderful pieces ever published on Fergonese, like 15 years ago, I think, for film comments. So I thought, you know, it would be ideal to do it with him. And then we embarked on searching for prints, which lasted roughly two years, like from studios, major Hollywood studios, to, uh, to different archives, European archives and everything. So trying to kind of reconstruct his life and filmography by showing films and also gathering information, data which could be used for, for writing the program notes and everything. Mm. And just again, if I want to focus on just one example to see how interesting it is and how, uh, how much in need of other people's support we are. One title, which was absolutely crucial to me at least, Black Tuesday, and it turned out to be one of the major highlights of this year's festival. So if either we do it with Black Tuesday or we don't do Fergonese, it won't make sense. You know. And this film has, hasn't been shown in ages because it was 
produced by someone who is an uh, unknown producer, like an independent producer, and then you know, um, drifted into the public domain, and uh, nobody heard about it uh, afterwards. So uh, we st we got in touch with the people who were who were known to be uh, experts on tracking down rare prints. And they put us in touch with someone in New Jersey who was known to have the only 35 mil print of the film, which turned out to be true. He had a 35 mm -hmm. mil print of the film. And it said, OK, uh, we want to show this film in Bologna. Can you let us to show it? But, but working with private collectors is very difficult mm -hmm. because they have very the false Partic ideas. Particular ideas. Yes, which are not very accurate about you know the yeah. amount of money you can make from by showing the film. So, mm. so okay, let's do something. And mm. this is this is the institutional side that mm. I talk to my colleagues. Mm. And this is this film is gold. This is absolutely precious. Mm. We have to do something about it. How about scanning the film? So okay, go ahead. You can scan the film. So I told that guy that we can scan the film mm. for you for free, mm. and send back the print, show the scan, and you will have a copy of the scan. Still no, he didn't want to ship it across mm. the Atlantic for whatever, he didn't want to send it to Europe. So okay, another solution, got in touch with the Library of Congress, and Library of Congress has helped us a lot in the past. I, I don't know if you remember, for instance, the Henry King retrospective, whenever there is a very rare print, which is so fragile that we cannot show, the Library of Congress scans the film. I said, would you do it? I said, yeah, absolutely, we would mm. be delighted, but we have to go through our papers to make sure the film doesn't have an owner, fine. They go through their papers and they discover that in the 60s, MGM had bought the rights to the film. Mm. So it's, okay, it's, a, it's an MGM film, technically. So we got in touch with the MGM. So, oh, no, we don't have it. A week later, they had it. Not only they had it, they had a 35 mil print. Not only they had a 35 mil, they had a fantastic mm. 35 mil print. And I said, okay, we want to show this. He's a good director. It's going to be part of a retrospective. Would you do something about it? There was not enough time for it. So you show it, we restore it afterwards. Mm. And that's what we did. Mm. So this is just one out of the 12 films, which, yeah. screen, which you see like involves three, f four different uh, yeah. major companies yeah. or institutions. And every single one of them has a, has a story like this. Yeah. And just, um, you know, you, we've just seen some, well, we've got a fantastic image of, of um, the, the, the Piazza Maggiore in Bologna. And, you know, th there's the audience. Uh, we can only dream of that audience. Um, and, and getting it to, to come to, you, you know, your, your venue to see a Freganese um, uh, film. I mean, you, you, Bologna has got baked in audience and it's got, incredible resources um, at, 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 at your disposal to, to you know, be able to touch the story you've just told. Um, it, it, but is, is there, what about the next audience? You know, how do you then, how do you, how, have you got experience of, you know, how you move it out into kind of wider, I know that Bologna tours films, for example, in, in Italy, I mean, is that, uh, are, you, are you very conscious of, you no, know, it's for Bologna, but then it has to have a life beyond that in the cinema? Uh, yes, N not all the time because yeah. we're usually so busy doing it that we mm. forget about you know tomorrow, mm. and then tomorrow we want to do something else. Mm. But in the, for this particular project, yeah, because Dave Care was involved, so MoMA was you know part of mm. the plan, and we thought of perhaps even expanding the retrospective for New York. Mm. And then before that, got in touch with different different um, cinema techs in Europe, and so these films are absolutely precious. And once they're in Europe. You have to show them. Mm. Uh, so I believe uh, the Cinematheque of Copenhagen is interested. We're showing a couple of titles in Barcelona. So yes, so, all the time. So that ripple effect that we're we're um, talking about is that it begins to move out through those kinds of institutions. Absolutely, and it has already nationally. happened. Unfortunately, yeah. you missed the festival this year, but. I, I, but uh, I was at my daughter's graduation. Please forgive me. Forgive me. Yeah, but I want to say something <laughs> else. That when you are there, Fergonese was basically a totally unknown director yeah. before 25th of June. Yeah. And now people are talking yeah. about him. And not just, you know, a cinephile conversation between two people. People are writing about him. Yeah. People want to show his films. That needs to make a major difference. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that is a fantastic uh, point um, about how those names that are lesser known come into kind of wider discourse and kind of wider... Um, and I think the relationship with individual cinemas um, and so cinema operators on, on this sort of ground that are doing stuff all year round will be something that, a kind of theme that will go through today. But it, it's also a good point at which to bring in um, Christy 
uh, Matheson from Edinburgh Film Festival because, I mean, Edinburgh has, again, got a great um, tradition of, whilst being a kind of uh, new films, also doing retrospectives um, and, you know, archive work as well. So I don't know if we can get um, Christy up on screen. I might just start talking. I don't know if you can hear me, Mark. Yes, we can. We can. Oh, great. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think uh, the um, I just just before I say anything, I do want to say thank you for Black Tuesday because I had the pleasure of seeing that recently at Bologna, and um, it was a total highlight. I'd never heard of the film, and suddenly I watched it, and then thought, oh, there's all these ideas that spin out of it. So um, I think that. It's great to see films and, and then it sparks a lot of programming ideas for, for all of us. But um, when I came uh, into uh, the festival in Edinburgh, you know, really one of the things that attracted me to, to sort of want to come to Scotland and work at the festival was that it, you know, it's, it's celebrating its 75th this year, but it has this incredibly rich history of not just screening new films, um, but really a dedication to looking at cinema in its totality. So putting new films next to older films, uh, putting archive next to, you know, very cutting edge. And so I think also, you know, my background is as a Cinematheque programmer. So for me, the retrospective was the one thing that I knew was key in, in thinking about the festival this year. And in fact, we as a team, we started with the retrospective and the theme of the festival, and then we built the rest of the program around it. So in every sense, the retrospective work that we've got this year is really, um, I guess, the spine of the festival. So it was, um, I guess, I started from my place of comfort. My comfort point is putting together retrospectives, but it's actually been a really wonderful way to then construct the whole program around the um, you know, around this idea of sort of looking at cinema as a continuum, you know, it's not just what's new. You can put those films in conversation and that can often spark something completely different for audiences, which I personally find quite interesting. Great. Because um, one of the things um, we are partnering with you on is the Kinyo Tanaka season. Um, do you want to talk a bit about how that evolved from your side and also... Um, you know, the fact that you're working in partnership with, uh, um, you know, venues across the UK? Yeah, I mean, the so the the sort of the, the kernel of the idea for all of the retrospective work this year is we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Women's Festival, which was something that Linda Miles, Laura Mulvey and Claire Johnson produced in Edinburgh in 1972. And it was the first time that any of the major European festivals had presented a program that was dedicated entirely to female directors. Um, and so just thinking about this as an idea, I definitely knew that, you know, I was looking for retrospectives that would, uh, I guess, speak to that. Um, and and with these films of um, Kinyu Tanaka, they, they haven't been easy to see. I, you know, the, there are a lot of films that um, maybe you could see in with, you know, some bad subtitles, but, um, you know, the work that Lily Histon did to put this retrospective together, which I think was originally planned for Locarno in, in 2020, and then subsequently Janice Criterion have restored all the films. Um, and so it allows us to kind of see these six films in a beautiful condition and to be able to watch them together as a, as a group, which I think is kind of important. You get to see um, what you know, all of the things that she was trying as a director across those nine years. Um, but I think in terms of uh, looking at retrospectives, it's um, it's certainly something I did a lot of at ACME. We worked a lot with our partners at the National Film and Sound Archive and at um, the Sydney Film Festival. And each year we would get together and decide on a retrospective or an idea, and then we would present it together as a, as a group. And what it allowed us to do is really just take those retrospective elements and elevate them. You know, suddenly we could get people in other cities to be talking about the films. We could we could essentially grow the conversation and it just seemed like a wonderful opportunity, you know, this year with yourselves, with BFI Southbank, with Glasgow Film Theatre. It's 
it's kind of great to be able to say, oh, well, we can elevate the retrospective elements of a program like ours, um, but also we, we get to work with colleagues. And I think that that is in this space, it's not a, um, you know, there's not a lot of people working in this space, but I think that we're all quite excited by the work we're seeing. And so I do think that we are much, um, we have a much better chance of reaching more audiences if we work collectively here rather than try and present, you know, four different retrospectives in the space of, say, yeah. two or three months. It's it's a lot for people to sort of, for consumers to yeah. kind of get their heads around. That's a, no, that's a really good point, um, is is how you sort of maximise, amplify, maximise the, the publicity and the profile um, which, which, as you say, I mean, working in partnership, and you know, it's been really great doing doing the Tanaka um, with yourselves and the other venues that you mentioned, because you want, you know, precisely that ripple effect um, to to kind of move through into sort of, sort of wider awareness, and then hopefully, you know, other kind of, uh, you know, raising the profile, but also, of course, getting them into cinemas again. Uh, um, thanks very much, um, Christy. I'll bring Matthew in, and then we'll open it up to the audience, but. Matthew, you're are you working on with the Barbican all year round? So th therefore, you're thinking about um, audiences and programming uh, on a year round. Or is is your focus the SA Film Festival? Um, so I'm spread across those two things. They're two separate things. The SA Film Festival takes place primarily at the ICA and across a number of different London venues, mm. as well as our university, which is Birkbeck University. So it's kind of spread across, in some sense, academia research looking into relationships with archives, different kinds of um, different restoration spaces. But we have a, but it's a public space. It's a public, you know, um, presentation. It's not, you know, symposiums and, you know, uh, lectures. It's a pub, they're public events. And that takes place in March. And that, so that kind of has a, you know, traditional kind of festival kind of structure. Then at the Barbican, which is my other job, we, yeah, are trying to, I myself with my colleagues are trying to introduce the Barbican as a space for some of these, you know, wonderful um, restorations. And it's interesting to hear um, both uh, Kirst, Christie and Esson because, you know, I feel like both spaces are also really closely engaged with places like Bologna. So when, um, even if Bologna aren't actively touring certain films, you know, like either through my presence this year or through looking at, you know, their very clear, concise, succinct sites, we're able to see what's being shown, see where it's, where it was available. And then I think it's important for us as London spaces to then present this work and continue the work that um, the archives that Esson's working with, that festivals like Bologna and Edinburgh um, are doing so that, you know, there's always a there's always a kind of opportunity for London audiences to engage with this because obviously Bologna is a big space, Edinburgh is a big space, but generally speaking, you know, they have distinct audiences and the people aren't from London are necessarily traveling to these places as well. Mm. And as a university and you know, a public cinema, Obviously, um, you know, we have different audiences as well. So interesting, potentially, is that we can speak to, you know, geographers, we can speak to law students, we can speak to English literature students, we can speak to Latin American studies. Mm. So in, in a sense, you have this excellent uh, network of, you know, potential audience members who maybe don't know so much about film, maybe don't know so much about the kind of cinematic element of it, but they know a lot about the context. And so we're able to also draw on these resources to kind of establish conversations around the rocks as well. So when it comes to like historical objects, um, archival objects, we're in an interesting space where we have, you know, experts who can speak to say, you know, the Iranian revolution, the Haitian revolution, if we're showing certain works which are engaging with that space as well. So my time is kind of split between two very different things, yeah. a small festival, which is, you know, at best quite niche but still is you know public facing and then barbican which is a big institution mm. but you know mm. i would say cinema doesn't necessarily function that highly in what they're doing and also we're a, primarily a first-run cinema as well so it's difficult to um build an audience in a way important but difficult to build an audience for these rep these rep, rep yeah. titles and in fact the reason i can't be there is because we're showing um a film this evening which showed that uh, bologna and was uh um, restored by the Arsenal in Berlin, uh, Moeda Memoria and Massacre, which is a Mozambican film. And again, it's, you know, we're showing a film which no one's heard of, which doesn't necessarily have much resonance. So we've worked really closely with the Portuguese embassy to kind of speak to, um, you know, those interested in Portuguese culture. And obviously this is a Mozambican film, so it's under the kind of banner, the wide banner mm. of, of Palop, really. So, so yeah, so in a yeah. way, I'm doing two different 
distinct yeah. things that still it, issued by the same kind of and just, limitations. And, and just thinking about your um, role at the Barbican, has has the Barbican because uh, you know that sort of pressure of first run films, has ha, have you seen um, audience growth um, for kind of rep archive and you know a, a, a more sustained interest happening? I think ultimately it is a struggle, but I think that the benefit of working in a small festival where you have lots of flexibility, lots of fluidity, is that you get, you know, approaches and good, you know, general tips. So whatever I'm doing, I'm doing with partners and doing with partners that will have a distinct connection to the subject matter. So for example, we had a sold out screening of a, of a Mika screening a few months back, and it obviously coincided with his centenary. So there's a lot of press around Mika. We had a celebration, you know, of, 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 his, of his work. We had poetry. We had an excellent, um, presentation by curator Herb Schellenberger, and we had the support of Lithuanian Embassy. So Lithuanian Embassy was focusing on Lithuanian kind of like uh, residents in the UK, and they also coincided with an important anniversary in Lithuanian history and culture. So we had a packed screening. You had people there who are coming from a Lithuanian context, people who are coming from an experimental film context, and people who are coming to see, you know, it was a 60 millimeter print that we got shipped over from the US, and people who come to see that kind of like, you know, tangible material object of the film. So constantly all of my thinking in the Barbican is, right, we know that we can attract an audience for four or whatever happens to be showing in the first run stuff, but we know we can't off the, off the, off the, off the bed, off the bounce, you know, attract a, a big audience for these smaller work. So it's just extra work, but yeah. ultimately it's necessary. And then, you know, hopefully eventually this will become a space where people will be more, oh cool, cinema, you know, restoration cinema, I'll go, you know, as yeah. opposed to like always having to start from scratch and think, right, we're showing, um, showing another film in a few months, which is also shown at Bologna, The Last Supper, which is a really fascinating Cuban film. Um, and again, we're starting from scratch again, using our kind of networks around Latin American cinema, using our networks in um, Latin American kind of culture and research. And, you know, it's, it's a struggle, but it's, yeah. you know, it's building from the base up. And yeah. I think it's really important because as I say, we connect all these networks that you've been describing as well. Yeah. So, no, no, absolutely. I mean, it is, it is, it's, it's networks and it's, it's, um, it, yeah, I mean, networks are absolutely vital. I'm going to open it up um, for questions. I mean, I think we can run uh, a few minutes uh, over, given that we started a little bit late, but has it, it, anybody got any questions that they want to dig a bit deeper into any particular area? Um and find out more. Ah, there's a there's a there's a question. If you just, I think we've got a handheld mic going around so that the Zoom guests will be able to. A projection need to switch it on, Maddie. Not. Perhaps you can hear me anyway. Well, I'll repeat it because um, I'm not sure that the. Yeah. Okay. Ask question. I'm, I'm just, did you, did Christy and Matthew hear that? You did? Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, we actually, we have a venue dedicated to that. So we start from, that venue starts from 9 uh, a.m. And usually there are hour-long panels, one after another, until roughly 3 p.m. Uh, so we have at least six conversations or panels or, or presentations every day. And that's the... And that's a great opportunity for everyone to, to, to listen to a director, to, to uh, attend a talk about the restoration of a film. So that venue is, is for that. But the, I think the magic of Bologna is that being in the city and being at the festival, you really uh, uh, run into people, interesting people, like-minded people. And you, know, you meet people automatically in a queue in a restaurant so, because almost everything becomes about about cinema and uh, but we, we 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 think of that venue which venue which we call Dam's Lab for as as a meeting point as a place for exchanging ideas yes but but you also um, I mean there are strands that the festival does um, that have developed over the years and it might be something that Christine and Matthew want to respond to as well that you know Bologna. Um, 
you know, th there's there's work that's evolved, and I'm thinking in particular because Annie um, uh, programs uh, African Africa Eye, so an African film festival that happens here at Watershed and around Bristol in November, and you know, I would feed back the the great work that Bologna is doing and. and uh, that Cecilia is doing with African films um, and archives, so that there's that there are strands of work as well that the festival. So it's not like, oh, what will we do next year? That there's there's a kind of body of work being developed all the time. Oh uh, yes, certainly. Some of them take years. Like we had a retrospective dedicated to Yugoslav cinemas, and that took roughly three years to put together because again. You could roughly guess why, because it's Yugoslavia, you're former Yugoslavia, so you have to go track down prints mm. in new states now, new republics. So it became very, very complicated. But yeah, it takes it takes a long, long time sometimes. Sometimes mm. the project is mm. is done right quick, but you know when mm. we deal with something like African cinema, it it's the you know it's a question of years really to yeah. to arrive at just one restoration, not a, a strand. Mm. Is there, and it's something that will be discussed in the panel um, later on today, but is there a tension between, you know, getting that work restored um, and so then you've got a, a copy of it and it's like, no, no, we can't let that go out any further because uh, we want to keep it. Um, you know, the, the, the kind of preservation, you know, versus, uh, you know, public access. Oh, certainly, of course. Yeah. Again, back to Fregonese, we screen a film from a director's uh, private print. I'm not mm. going to name the director, I'm not allowed to, but you can use your imagination. So we screen a 75 years old technicolor vintage print of a film by Fergonese, which belongs to an American director. And they are not allowing MoMA to screen it. The not. In, yeah, not, yeah. no, because they could allow only for one single screening of that film. Mm. And, you know, they decided yeah. it to be Bologna. Mm. Uh, and uh, so you cannot screen that film again. Yeah, it yeah. happens all the time, and there are good reasons for it because you know it's, it's a precious yeah. print. You cannot put it into the projector every day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It happens, but in terms of restoration, when something is restored, of course, anyone who restores films these days—not anyone. I mean, maybe not some private companies or big studios, but World Cinema Foundation, Arsenal, all the names you mention here—they really want to put the film out there. That's mm. why they are doing mm. it. Mm. And, and I just want to bring uh, Christy in first and then Matthew, just that, that idea of uh, you know, the, the, what fe festivals and, uh, do is allows you, as it were, to think a bit longer term. I've been thinking myself in terms of you know, cinema rediscovered and talking with colleagues about you know, can we have a kind of three to five year programming plan? You know, are there ideas that, that you know, you're thinking about now that, that will happen in a, a few years' time? Is that something that a you know, kind of festival allows you to do? Christy? Um, I, think, I think for me, um, be, be like I said, because I come from a cinema tech background and I guess I'm uh, used to probably working a bit more, you know, in a similar way to what Matthew's doing where you're working in an institution and you're kind of, you know, you're thinking about things that are a little further down the track. Um, and then I guess also to Essen's point, you know, some things take a very long time. So, I certainly have a number of um, ideas that are, you know, that are already starting to bubble away. I think the the real um, advantage with us in a festival context is that idea of partnerships. You know, I'm I'm quite interested in in this idea of co curation and and what what ideas do other people have and how can we bring those ideas into the festival and use the festival as I guess, you know, a portal to kind of make that happen. Um, but I guess one thing that we've done this year with the program is it's, it's broadly the main slate is divided up into five different distinct strands. And for each of those strands, we've chosen a, a headline film. And that's really a way to uh, for audiences to, I guess, get the flavour of that strand. But we've also put a, you know, a classic film with each of those strands. And again, it's just about trying to find ways to weave um, to weave cinema from different times and places together so that audiences don't feel like they are, well, maybe I can't commit to that whole retrospective, so I'm just not going to do that. So we're trying to weave, I guess, the story of cinema across all of the program and not have such um, uh, rigid 
uh, containers where, well, that's where all the new films live and this is where all the older films live. So we're, we're, we're still sort of re very much working this out and we'll see how audiences react to this to this sort of layout. Um, we may have to change that. But in terms of, of thinking about our future retrospectives, um, I certainly came back incredibly inspired from Bologna. So um, thank you, Essen, to you and all of your um, colleagues there. It was it was pretty terrific going to a festival and just getting to indulge in um, uh, in classic cinema. It felt very luxurious, I must say. Okay. Great. And, and Matthew, do you want to respond to that point about sort of future planning and thinking about what you might be doing in the seasons and um, areas that you might be doing in three to five years? Yeah, I mean, I guess when working with archives, often there's a, there's a, there's a drag really because of access and because also you have to build up trust as well because if you're dealing with, you know, um, marginal, sometimes quite fragile objects, you know, it's not a guarantee that any archive is going to give it to you as well. So a lot of this is just relationship building. And actually, like, the other element is even when it's not physical, fragile objects, I mean, it, it, it kind of boggles the mind sometimes how difficult it is to just pay people to show work, really. And it's, it's, I never quite understand it if it's about profile or whatever, but sometimes we're working on a project which I won't name for maybe like four years, and it's just, it takes such a long time. And you're effectively just trying to pay people to show material and, and to celebrate this material. I think, when, especially when you're working um, across different countries and stuff as well, and um, it, it, it becomes such a drawn out process. I just want to add one thing about the question of conversation as well, because I think it's interesting working in, say, two very different spaces. One, public cinema, where actually, you know, there's a early screening and a late screening. So actually these conversations are nearly always secondary to the film. And actually it can really restrict what you're able to do. Whereas in our kind of festival, which, you know, is set effectively in a university, we're able to have, you know, long symposiums, you know, mm. conversations where we can explore different waves and stuff. And that's one of the, the nicest things about, I guess, working outside of that kind of, um, you know, traditional space. You're, you're, you know, if, if something is take three hours, take three hours, you know, you can have breaks and it's a smaller space where, you know, people feel comfortable to share stuff. And some of the best experiences we've had are either people in the audience who know their stuff. I mean, when we showed Esan's film Farsi, there was a, you know, excellent kind of uh, full blooded argument and discussion with people who really know the material that someone's working with and the context as well. So I think in our kind of space where, again, it also it's free so anyone can come, you know, it's not that price element isn't such a barrier. We're able to get really interesting, you know, in some cases quite animated conversations, which I haven't really found as common in Barbican mm. um, for different reasons. So yeah. yeah, it's really interesting. It's great to find different spaces to have these conversations. Yeah. That's great. Um, I'll wait a time. Um, we've got another session uh, coming up um, and we'll get back on track. But I, I, I'd like to thank very much uh, Matthew um, and Christy. Good luck with, uh, I believe you're launching the festival, um, Edinburgh so, uh, Film Festival. Good, good luck with all of that and hopefully just see Just a few you. hours. Yeah. Just a few hours. So we're really excited. If, um, we'd love to encourage people to come up. Yeah. To, uh, it's a little cooler up here, so... Uh, you know, yeah. if that's if that's any relief. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck with it all and hopefully see you up thank there. Thank you so much. Yeah. And and Ersan, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you.